Hi everybody, it's Chris and welcome back to another video. Today I thought I would share and rank my favourite 25 Motown 45s. Now, this was a label that started in uh, 59, produced a number of singles, probably somewhere in the region, I don't know, 700 plus? I've absolutely no idea. If you do know, pop it in the comments. But it's a, it's a label that helped to really reshape the sound of pop music in the mid-late 60s. Incredibly influential label. Um, I've got about 100 of uh, 45 from this label and I've chosen my top 25. Now I've only gone for one single from any one artist which meant I had to make some really difficult decisions and there are some 45s I don't possess that I can't share and they would have definitely made my top 25. So for example, Take Me For A Little While, Kim Weston, What's Going On by Marvin Gaye which I've got an album but not on 45. Uh, Do You Love Me by The Contours, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell. Um, what else? Um, Barrett Strong Money. Um, what else? I, those five definitely would make it. I'm sure there's others as well. So I've got 25. Tell me what you think in the comments below. So at number 25, I've gone with The Miracles and Love Machine. Kind of a disco number from 75. Uh, got up to a number one, I think. Number one in the States and was very successful. And this is the version of The Miracles with Billy Griffin as the lead vocals rather than Smokey Robinson. But good tune, disco tune at number 25. At 24, I Want You Back by the Jackson 5 from 1969, probably featuring a very, very young Michael Jackson. Um, they followed this up, I think, with ABC, which to, to these ears sounds exactly the same as this. But that's my 24, Jackson 5, I Want You Back, which was from their debut album and is, I think, the only single from that album. At number 23... Um, the Contours, Just a Little Misunderstanding. This was written by Stevie Wonder and has Joseph Stubbs singing it. He's the, um, I don't know, older or younger brother of Levi Stubbs from The Four Tops. So that's at 23. At 22... I've gone with River Deep Mountain High, which was a collaboration between the Four Tops and the Supremes. It comes from an album called The Magnificent Seven, and this is a really grandiose version of that particular tune, a tune that was covered by numerous people, but I think this is the best version, and it is the most successful version as well. Uh, Deep Purple did a version of that as well, in fact. OK, number 21. Put Yourself in My Place by the Elgins. Now, this originally came out in 66 on their debut single as a B-side, but was reissued in 71 as an A-side and did OK for them. Uh, I think this has been covered by a number of different groups, uh, but that's the Elgins, Put Yourself in My Place. That's at number 21. So we're in the top 20 now. At number 20... Uh, a collaboration, a duet between Marvin Gaye and Kim Weston. It takes two. He did a number of very, very good duets. His voice just complements so many different other voices. And uh, that's a great 45 for Marvin Gaye and Kim Weston. It takes two at number 20. At number 19, Needle in a Haystack by The Velvets. This is a Norman Whitfield produced song. Uh, they followed this up with He Was Really Saying Something, which Banana Rama did uh, quite a number of years after. At number 18, gone for I'm a Roadrunner by Junior Walker and the All-Stars. This man was a fantastic tenor sax player. Uh, produced a lot of solo material, but also played on a number of other albums as a guest musician. And if you're a rock fan, you'll be probably well aware of the sax solo that he plays in Urgent by Foreigner, which is just sublime. Absolutely brilliant. But that's I'm a Roadrunner, Junior Walker and the All Stars. That's at number 18. At 17, Help Me Make It Through the Night, Gladys Knight and the Pips. Beautiful voice, wonderful vocal, country ballad originally written by Chris Christopherson, but a fantastic version of it. She had a beautiful voice, Gladys Knight. Um, at number 16, now originally I was going to go with SOS, um, Stopper on Sight, but I've only got that on Rick Tick Records rather than Motown. I think it also came out on Polydor Records. So I've gone with War by Edwin Starr great vocals his voice really suits this particular song it's a great song it was also covered by bruce springsteen frankie goes to hollywood as well but a tremendous song that's edwin star war uh, it's at number 15 no 16 at 15 this old heart of mine 
by the Izzy Brothers. So this was a band that were all ready, very established before they came on Motown, and they didn't last on Motown very long. So they'd already done Twist and Shout and Shout. They'd already introduced the world to Jimi Hendrix as a guitarist. But this particular song came out in 65. They didn't do many singles for Motown, but this was originally, I think, for the Supremes, but it's um, just a, a magnificent song. That's This Old Heart of Mine is Weak For You by the Izzy Brothers. That was at 15. At 14, the first kind of female superstar of the Motown era, probably. This is Mary Wells and My Girl. My Girl? My Guy, sorry. Um, great song from her. This was probably, other than a couple of collaborations, the last thing that she did for Motown, although it's obviously on Stateside, which is a subsidiary of Motown. At number 13, I've gone with All of My Life by Diana Ross. You know, hard to choose your favourite Diana Ross song, but I love the vocals on this song. I think it's a beautiful song, but the vocals on it are absolutely superb. So that's my Diana Ross pick, and that's at number uh, 13. At number 12, we've got a song that was written by Smokey Robbins for The Temptations, and they did a version of it, and it wasn't overly successful. And uh, But it did um, do very well for a white band called Rare Earth, who bought out Get Ready, and they bought it out on their own label, Rare Earth, which is a subsidiary label of Motown, a tremendous version. This is an edited for, uh, version from the album. Anyway, it's two minutes and 46 seconds. The album version is 21 minutes long, um, and the live version is even longer than that, but they do, that's a tremendous, really of the time, it's a tremendous version of it. That's Rare Earth and Get Ready. At number 11, I've gone with Easy by the Commodores, obviously featuring Lionel Richie on vocals uh, with a really cheeky guitar solo at the end. Tremendous, beautiful lyrical solo at the end of this particular tune. On the B-side, there's two songs, I Feel Sanctified and Machine Gun, which was a song that potentially was going to find its way into my countdown. But I went with Easy as I, I do actually just marginally prefer that. I did include Machine Gun on my instrumental 45s. So I'm going with Easy at number uh, 11. We're in the top 10. Who haven't I mentioned so far? The decisions were, were coming thick and fast here and were really difficult. But here we go. At number 10, we've got Canadian singer Ardeen Taylor. So this came out on VIP records in the kind of late 60s, I think. It wasn't very successful. VIP was a subsidiary of Motown. They bought it out in Motown in 74, and I think it went top five in the UK. There's a Ghost in My House by Arlene Taylor. It's been covered by a few people, but it's a wonderful song. I love that. That's my number 10. At number nine, we've gone with, oh, I've gone with Don't Leave Me This Way by Thelma Houston. Now, this was um, a Gamble Huff song. It was uh, originally recorded on the Philadelphia label by Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Really good version of it, but this is the disco version of it by Thelma Houston. Um, it says 76 on here, but I'm pretty sure it charted in 77. It did in the UK anyway. Tremendous song. I think the Communards did a version of that, which is, which is shit, frankly. At number eight, we've got the signature tune, I believe, for the, the Four Tops. I nearly went with Simple Game, which I really, really like. But I think Reach Out, I'll Be There is just quintessential Motown and I think is the signature tune for the Four Tops. Wonderful stuff. Got a, quite a shouty vocal from Levi Stubbs. Uh, brilliant vocal on it, but uh, I love that song. Reach Out, I'll Be There, Four Tops at number eight. At number seven, if that was the signature tune for the four tops i think this potentially is the signature tune for this artist although nowhere to run and heat wave may well edge it but this i think is the signature tune for motown this is um, dancing in the street by martha reeves and the vandellas again on stateside the subsidiary of of motown records just a, a brilliant song covered by lots of people uh, fantastic fantastic single that's at number seven at number six this was a tough decision because this band have done loads of absolutely amazing 45s. Um, so, but in the end, I went with a tune that I think was a US number one. I can't remember how it did in the States. This is um, on Stateside. It's a Tamla Motown production though. And it's uh, Where Did Our Love Go by the Supremes with a Diana Ross vocal. Just again, 
quintessential Motown sound. Absolutely fantastic stuff. From the Supremes, that's at number six. So we're now into the top five. Tough decisions, some amazing tunes coming your way. At number five, at number five, um, this was this guy. I think epitomizes the sound of of um, of Motown. He's the foundation of the Motown empire. I nearly went with Tears of a Clown, but I've gone with Tracks of My Tears by Smokey Robinson. And the Miracles, absolutely tremendous 45. Um, I think um, this is um, a million seller, quite possibly. It's an absolutely brilliant song. It just, for me, it encapsulates Smokey Robinson brilliant and Motown to some extent, but certainly Smokey Robinson, the brilliance of him in, in three minutes. It's absolutely tremendous 45. So, number four. Number four is Jimmy Ruffin. What becomes of the broken hearted this is the older younger brother of david ruffin from the temptations originally i think this was uh earmarked for the spinners but uh jimmy ruffin got the nod for this particular uh song and it's ah oh, just absolutely gorgeous what becomes of the broken hearted by jimmy ruffin so we're into the top three some really big hitters now so this was a difficult decision, but it was made easy by the fact that I don't own what's going on. So I've gone with Marvin Gaye. I heard it through the grapevine. Um, you know, this is just a, a brilliant single. It sold millions of copies. It had a kind of a little bit of a reboot in the middle 80s as well, when um, it was used with for a Levi. It certainly was here. Um, I guess it was worldwide. It was used with a Levi commercial. Uh, with a guy taking his jeans off and putting them into a, a laundrette. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, a model, but it was a great advert. I heard it through the grapevine by Marvin Gaye. This was a song that's been covered by lots of people. I, I, I don't know if Gladys Knight didn't do it first. In fact, she does a quite an up-tempo version, which is quite good. Credence Clearwater Revival's long version of it actually is really good too, but that's, that's just an amazing tune, I think. Amazing tune, so top two. Top two were initially a bit interchangeable, um, but I've, I'm going to go with the order that I settled on just prior to setting up this video. I could have chosen one of any 15 songs for this fella. Oh, my God. The man is an absolute genius. And, and so I've gone with this song. This is from Talking Book, and it's Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Absolutely brilliant. The little drum beat at the start was originally um, comes from Jeff Beck in the studio, just noodling away on the drums, and Stevie Wonder saying, "Hey, I love that. Let's 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 have that um, in the single." And he plays most of the instruments um, on this particular tune. It's just a masterpiece. Now Jeff Beck did do a version of it, in fact, and 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 I think Stevie Wonder was keen for Jeff Beck to bring out his version of it before before he did. Um, which he didn't, he brought out afterwards, and he did with a band called Beck, Boga and a Piece. Uh, it's not a bad version at all, but this is just sensational. One of the best pop 45s of all time for me. That's at number two. So what's at number one? What's at number one? Can you guess what's at number one? Because at number one, we've got an absolute classic. It is Papa Was a Rolling Stone by The Temptations. This is a visionary classic. Now, originally, this is a Whitfield Strong song, originally recorded by The Undisputed Truth. Their verse is not bad, but this is just absolutely amazing. It comes from the album All Directions, and on the album, it's 12 minutes long, and it has a four and a half minute introduction, and that introduction is the B-side, the instrumental version of Papa's Rolling Stone. The remaining seven minutes, seven minutes for a pop single, wow is on side A. And it was unusual for a pop single to be that long. You know, this was before the time of American Pie or Bohemian Rhapsody, and, and seven minutes was really long. But this, for me, is absolutely classic. It encapsulates um, everything about black music. It's got jazz trumpet. It's got a kind of a Miles Davis kind of sound at the start, and in Silent Way kind of start. It's got some blues guitar on it. It's got the most amazing bass line. It's absolutely gorgeous, this particular song, isn't it? Um, so seven minutes long, it's just a, a cinematic soul classic, kind of in the vein of Isaac Hayes, I think. Um, just, ah, oh, absolutely brilliant. It has that shattering punchline, when he died, all he left us was alone. Just tremendous. And that is my favourite Tamala Motown 45. At least it is today. Tell me what you think 
in the comments below and I'm sure I'll be back sometime with another video. Cheers all, take care.